immigrant is never an easy one. Oftentimes we leave things that we're familiar with, like family, friends, food, in search of bigger opportunities and pursuing the big dream. Join us today as we share the amazing stories of people who have made that kind of leap. once again for joining us on this episode of Community Connect where we get to share the amazing ways people find to connect within the local community and how they try to make a difference. This is a follow-up to a recent episode on global citizenship and um, I had a great time mm -hmm. talking to Zen and to Abkar about their journey as immigrants coming from Pakistan and coming from Chad and what that has looked like and mm -hmm. the experiences in Canada. It was a really great time. Thank you mm -hmm. for taking out of your time to share with yeah. us. So Zen, Zen moved with his family from Pakistan mm -hmm. um, at the age of 13. Mm -hmm. uh, his parents were trying to find better education opportunities for their mm -hmm. kids and um, that's what brought you to Canada, yeah. and we're glad to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to be here. <laughs> yes. And Abkar um, made that decision to move from Malaysia to, to Canada for yeah. it after uh, your education. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Abkar is changing lives in a lot of ways. He runs a YouTube channel that has over 250,000 subscribers and has over 15 million viewers. And Zen is the chair of the World Partnership Walk mm -hmm. here in Victoria. Um, that's a local charity that seeks to support the Aga Khan Foundation. Mm -hmm. I know that your work is beyond here. Uh, for Abkar, for instance, you reach out yeah. to people through social media, through YouTube, and so that's outside of this local community. For Zen as well, the real impact of your work is mm -hmm. outside of here. So how are you still able to connect with the local community mm -hmm. in spite of your global outlook? You know, it's um, dealing with every interaction as a conversation and, and an education, right? So the, the beauty of living in, in Canada and on the island is that people are aware of what's going on in the world and they want to learn, mm -hmm. right? And that's an opportunity to bring them together and uh, align them to a cause, right? right. Um, and talk about things that they see every day. Uh, such as poverty in the world, mm -hmm. health issues, food security issues, and, and what can we do in a tangible manner as Canadians to, right. to help alleviate those. Things. What I'm hearing is the world is moving from that place where the problems on the other mm -hmm. side of the world is yeah. their problem. Yeah. Now it's yeah. become our problem. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we don't have the luxury of thinking of it as somebody else's issue. Right. right. It's, uh, it's, it doesn't exist mm -hmm. in this world anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it is how can we do and what can we do to help yes. the world. Yes. Uh, regardless of where people are and mm -hmm. what they do and, uh, and how they live and what they, you know, what faith they follow. Mm -hmm. It's about people. Mm -hmm. It's about people. Exactly. It's yes. about communities. It's people yes. like us who live somewhere else yeah. and mm -hmm. are, are in, in some ways looking for an opportunity to, to uh, you know, reach their potential. Right. And in that, in that way, we actually learn a lot ourselves, mm -hmm. right? That is all about sharing knowledge, mm -hmm. right? It's about just being humans yes. and yeah. being global citizens. Yes. Right? Yeah. I know <clears throat> there's that ongoing argument around do we contribute locally or do we yeah, yeah contribute yes, yeah absolutely. and i'm sure that's something that it's, you come face yeah, to face with absolutely and it's it's a very interesting question mm -hmm. and the question is i can see poverty around the corner from where i live yes. right i see people who uh, need a hand here mm -hmm. i see people who are lining up for food banks mm -hmm. right why should i give internationally yes. when the need is uh, national Local. right mm -hmm. and 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 you know historically we've thought about it as an or statement right it's like mm -hmm. either i give locally or internationally mm -hmm. I, the world isn't an or statement anymore right. it's an and statement mm -hmm. it's like i give locally and, and i give internationally right. because everything that happens around the world doesn't matter if it happens around the corner or mm -hmm. if it happens 30,000 kilometers away mm -hmm. it affects us mm -hmm. it affects us and what we do affects others and, and, and I think with social media, we are, we're coming closer to each other. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Now, a couple of years ago, uh, the government started bringing groups of Syrian mm -hmm. refugees to Victoria. Mm -hmm. So the first group that came, I volunteered with them doing interpretation, Arabic to English. Now, I was trying to break the ice on the first day mm -hmm. because I, I understand what they went through. I saw them playing foosball on the first day, okay. and that that's game is my game. Okay. <laughs> so I jumped in without their permission right. and started playing with them. So. Two of them who I was opposite to them, they froze and they started looking at me. So I felt maybe I offended them, I did right. something wrong. 
and then they froze for like five seconds. They seemed very long, five seconds. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then one of them said, you are Akka, right? I said, yes. Oh. I said, I was watching a YouTube channel. Oh, my oh, so, wow. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. He was in a refugee camp oh. and trust that they, have, they don't have enough food, mm -hmm. but they have Wi-Fi. Wow. So, so they were able to access YouTube and they were watching my channel and wow. they, they were preparing themselves for Canada. Wow. Now, another thing happened just last month and a guy approached me and said, you are okay, right? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. He said, I was watching your channel when I was wow. in Lebanon. He's, he's from Iraq. He was accepted as a refugee by the United Nations mm -hmm. and he was selected to be placed in Canada. He had to wait seven years from the time he was accepted wow. until the time he got his flight ticket. Wow. Now, when he got his ticket, they asked him where, like, w they said, the ticket money is ready, where do you want to go? Yeah. He said, I want to go to Victoria. <laughs> oh, really? That's what he told me. He said, they, they asked him why. He said, I'm watching this guy on YouTube. He wow. speaks greatly about this city. Wow. That's the only wow. city in Canada that I want to go to. <laughs> and he's here right now. He's here. Wow. So um, that's how sometimes what you do in a certain place can impact your own local community. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that everyone can always do something mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Don't look at anything that you do uh, in a way like, or like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. No, actually try to look at it as something good you're doing and it will come back. It yes. will come back to you and it will come back mm -hmm. to you in a positive way. Yes. It will come back to your community in a mm -hmm. positive way. And mm -hmm. regardless of who it touches, the bottom line is you're touching someone's life. Yeah. Whether within your locality or mm -hmm. even outside of mm -hmm. that, just yeah. doing good and becoming that person mm -hmm. who really yeah. wants to mm -hmm. make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard you share some amazing stories of lives that you've impacted and but what i really want to get to is the man behind all of that your own story um what are the things where did you find that motivation what was your journey like what really triggered everything for me is that when i was looking around me i wasn't find i didn't find any mentors i didn't mm -hmm. find any success stories mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there were there were only limited paths to mm -hmm. for me and most of them were unfortunately either illegal paths mm -hmm. or paths that don't lead you anywhere. You work in a factory until you are 60. Hmm. That's it. There was no future, basically. So I had to decide that it's time for me to find a future for myself. So I was 12 and I walked into a night school for adults. Hmm. And I said, I want to study. What do, you, what do I need to do? Why were you not able to go to school before 12? The, the first reason was my family basically moved from Chad to Saudi Arabia okay. when we had the civil war in Chad. Mm -hmm. So my family's priority was really education. My family's priority was to survive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And until you are in a situation where survival is important, you can't realize really how that could impact your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and they were not educated themselves. So they, they don't really understand the importance of education. And I don't say it in a way that that's something lacking with them. No, that they actually, they succeeded by taking us from a very dangerous situation mm -hmm. to a very safe situation. Mm -hmm. But then we or the community had to take the next step and help us forward. Mm -hmm. But that didn't happen. So I got forgotten. Mm -hmm. And many people like me got forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I call myself the forgotten person, and I call everyone I'm trying to help through social media the forgotten community. Mm. There are a lot of people globally who got forgotten by everyone, mm. and they end up going through taking refugee boats, going somewhere, taking... Um, and losing their lives yeah, in the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I walked into that school. I, uh, it's, a long, it's a very long story, but to keep it short, yes. uh, the teacher told me, you're too young to be mm -hmm. in adult, adult school. I told him, daytime school, they tell, tell me I'm too old. So You're old. telling me I'm too young. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. That actually made him decide to help me go into the school, and that's where my journey started. Mm -hmm. And throughout the years, throughout the different levels of education, I faced a challenge after a challenge after a challenge. Mm -hmm. I won't say I managed to successfully overcome them. I would say I was fortunate and lucky. Mm -hmm. And that what actually led me to try to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Because if I look around me, everyone I grew up with, the mass majority never went to school mm -hmm. or they finished a very low level of education, like right. elementary or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I decided I need to do something about that. And that's how my journey with education and social media mm -hmm. started. And now this is not just <coughs> you. I mean, it's one thing to have all of those opportunities mm -hmm. and to keep it to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to want mm -hmm. to actually make a difference in whatever way you can. And what, what I'm learning from this is 
it doesn't take a lot to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and if you allow me, there's just one story that I want to share that yes, just please. shows how much sometimes, if you just use the tools around you, mm -hmm. you can actually impact someone's life greatly. Yes. There was this uh, a person that I knew through my social media accounts. We were speaking online for a year. Uh, in my channel, I talked about a lot of different opportunities for scholarships, countries that are, where education is free, mm -hmm. like Norway and Germany and so on. Everything he tried didn't work out for him. Mm -hmm. He was just unfortunate. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's, it's not that he was doing something wrong, he was just unlucky. Mm -hmm. And then after a year from knowing him, he told me, you know what, I, I, I met a guy who smuggles people to Europe. Mm. I have decided to go to Italy. I booked a ticket mm -hmm. on, on mm -hmm. one of those refugee boats and he was going to mm. there. When I heard that, I, I knew at that point I have, I have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So I told him, don't do anything. I will try to think of something for you, but you have to promise me not to do anything. Mm -hmm. I, I thought for a while, I said, let me speak to my community and see if we can help him. So I, I set up my camera, I started recording. I said, guys, one of our friends decided to take a refugee boat. As you know, as you're following the news, a lot of those people are dying now. Right. And the ones who do reach Europe eventually, mm -hmm. their life go through an end ended mm -hmm. cycle of, of struggles after mm -hmm. struggles. So I want to help him. Would you like to join me? I will apply for him to study in university. And I want you to help fund his education with me. And the channel, at that time, the channel had um, 100,000 subscribers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I said, if each one of us pays $1, mm -hmm. we will cover all his education mm -hmm. fee mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So I applied for him in a, in a university that I was aware of in Malaysia. It was, uh, the price, the tuition fee was affordable. Okay. Uh, I applied for him, I calculated the entire cost and said, guys, this is how much we need to pay for him. This is how much he needs for his living. This is the, the link is below, please help donate. And within two weeks, we covered the entire cost for his wow. education, uh, for his flight ticket, uh, mm -hmm. he, he, we bought his ticket and what we did actually, I asked him to vlog his entire process. Okay. When he was going to the Malaysian embassy to get the visa, mm -hmm. when he bought his, when he got the ticket, when he's going to the airport, mm -hmm. you can see an, an, an amazing actually joy on his face that mm -hmm. you can't of explain. Of uh, you can see his face when he was going to the embassy to mm -hmm. get his passport and when he came out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was the same person, but, but it looked like it was a different person. Yes. And as we speak now, he actually finished his English course in the university and he mm. passed. And he's waiting, he's in August, he's going to start his degree program. He's okay. going to study computer science. And all that by just making one video and one. calling out to people. Yeah. And, um, and if everyone uses the tools that they have, the yes, avenues they have, your you local can. community, mm -hmm. people around mm -hmm. you, your family, your friends, mm -hmm. you can always change someone's mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's thank amazing. you for sharing that. That's I'm amazing. sure, I mean, that guy's life has been changed yeah, forever. Absolutely. On a final note, what would global citizenship look like mm -hmm. for you? I mean, everything that you do is mm -hmm. being global, but mm -hmm. for your son, your 22-month-old son, in mm -hmm. 22 years, mm -hmm. what are the things you would do that will make you say, this is a global citizen? It's a very interesting question. Right. Uh, I, I, you know, I think that they're forgetting the notion of other, mm. right? And uh, not thinking of somebody as somebody else, mm. but as thinking of as a, us, us as a big tribe, a right. tribe, right? Like that we're all together. Mm -hmm. We're just people um, who look different, speak different languages, yes, but we're all just people. Yes. I think that's very key. And as I think about it, you know, our role as Canadians and, and just people mm -hmm. it, right now is it's even more important that we that we do what we're doing and continue to do mm -hmm. what we're doing. Because if if the trajectory is what it is, I don't know what the world will look like. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I want to look at it with uh, with possibilities yes. and, and, you know, with optimism. And I think that's the key. I think we have to hold on to optimism yes. Yes. and you have to think of it that, yes, we there are enough people who are just waiting to be asked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. A lot of the times when we talk about development and getting money uh, and, you know, fundraising, many people say, well, I wasn't asked, so I never donated. Right. Yeah. right? It's a matter of just asking. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that's that's what I feel the world would look like in a global, global, uh, a true global it. center would mm -hmm. look like is that anybody can ask for anything and know that somebody will He's be there to help. to help. Yeah, right? Yes. I agree. Yeah. Yes. Akon, what would global citizenship look like for you? I think when you see everyone as a human being, mm -hmm. that's it. Without mm -hmm. any other attachments, mm -hmm. without any other boundaries, mm -hmm. without anything else. If you see everyone as a human being, 
and you treat them as a human being, mm -hmm. I think we all will be global citizens. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, and I think, uh, uh, especially here in Canada, with all the challenges that we spoke about in the first episode and this episode, I think we really, we, we, we are leading the race in that mm -hmm. by, by, sure. by being global citizens and by treating everyone as that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I can attest to that by the amount of people who are reaching out to me in social media mm -hmm. who, who don't live in Canada, who are watching from outside, mm -hmm. who actually envy what we have here. Okay. So uh, I think that's what a global mm -hmm. citizen is. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't even add anything more to make that perfect. <laughs> thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. Community Connect has become that place to find inspiration, to share the amazing stories of people who are doing what they can to make a difference in their local communities and ultimately in the world. I hope that just like me, um, getting together to hear the stories of these people, you're inspired to do something different. Um, do join us on another episode of Community Connect as we share even more incredible stories of people trying to make a difference in their world. I am Ruth Majid. See you next time. Thank you.